The following program is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network, produced in association with Michigan State University. I'm Jim Peck. Welcome to MSU Today. Take a look at what's coming. Robofish. Mohammed behind the scenes. A musical legend. Getting dirty with the Baja team. This next story is about a group of engineers who have designed a terrifying robotic fish that's slowly taking over our world. It's, oh, it's not, don't, don't say that. Uh, this lab has been uh, established for about 60 years. Behind these doors in the basement of the engineering building. Oh, I like the MSU. Is a room full of electronics, robotics, and a huge tank of water. It's a large water tank. It's about 15 feet long, uh, 10 feet wide, and about four feet high. This is where you come to see your electronics take a swim. All right. We do research on a uh, number of things uh, from control systems to smart materials and to robotics. And uh, one strong active program is on robotic fish. Robofish? Really? This is a facility that we use for studying the design and the performance of robotic fish. And I guess we can put that in water. So robotic fish, that sounds interesting. But there is much more behind this than just wires, circuits, and motors. Can we take these things down to real applications, meaning uh, can you use these robots that are behaving like fish in some sense to scout out the environment, for example, and collect information and do such things through collaboration. We do uh, experiments on how, you know, the speed of it and how it turns, and we want to put sensors on it. So eventually we could deploy it in lakes. We are starting to explore things like environment monitoring. We're going to put this, uh, kind of hold this fish in the river uh, and take a picture of it. <laughs> that feels like perfect weight, about like a real fish. One idea is about their application uh, is to mount different sensors potentially on these things. Let them patrol the water environment. That way you can get uh, information like oxygen level, I mean dissolved oxygen level, temperature, uh, salinity, and even turbidity and all kinds of environmental factors. So what could a school of robofish accomplish by swimming around in your local lake or stream? You can uh, monitor the drinking water supply, supply make sure you know, nothing is suspicious or in the water. So, Really, you can talk a lot of potential applications in environmental science, in uh, public uh, safety, and even in uh, defense. These robotic fish fitted with sensors could swim around a pond or river and monitor the water quality. Some of the other applications involve monitoring oxygen levels at fish farms and even surveillance of our seaports. Is there anything that these fish can't do? Our fish aren't uh, submersible fish right now. They just swim on the surface. And in this particular fish, the top is removable, so it's not permanently sealed. So once water gets in it, it'll just fry the circuitry. But Chabot and his team are working on that. They're in development of a robotic fish that can submerge, loaded up with sensors that will keep us safe. Let's just hope they don't become self-aware and take over the world. Every science fiction movie that I've ever seen, that's when, that's when the robots take over the world. Right. I'm concerned about that at all. Well, not at this point. <laughs> not at this point. Mohammed is an Iraqi boy who's come to the States for some life-changing surgeries. We put a little video camera into his hands so that he could tell his story from his own perspective. One more time. Yeah, one more time. There you go. Okay. See, once you see it open, you know you're good to go. Okay. How's it going, bud? What are you up to today? There you go. Keep, keep getting them. Keep getting them. I'm going to follow you around all day, buddy. All right. <laughs> okay, sit. And then and make sure uh, make sure the red's recording there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just talk. What did you do today? Uh, I played PSP today. Nice tackle, Muhammad. We brought him into our home um, not, not knowing exactly what's going to happen. This is the first time for us hosting somebody. And um, it's, it's been a wonderful experience for us. 
We did uh, Hollow Bunny uh, today at costume, and I brushed my teeth, and today the weather is not well, good. I, I don't know why. But it's actually 3.30. Okay. And now I'm gonna go play uh, Xbox football. Okay, bye. See ya. Come on, Muhammad. You can do this. Do you think you're gonna win? Maybe. Do you think you can come back from being down 21 to zero? Yeah. He first came here, um, because I wanted him to feel like that he's a part of the family and not just a guest. Um, my kids all, you know, have chores. They have to clean their room, they have to vacuum, they have to do all these things. So I'm like, you know, I want him to be like that too. Of course he has his own room. Oh wait, this is my room. This is where I sleep. Look, this is Barton and Curtis Granderson. And, um, you know, I taught him how to do that. I'm like, well, you've got clothes, you're going to bring your, your you know, laundry down. He's my dirt clothes. <laughs> and I even showed him how to put them in the washing machine. Uh, uh, and after that, he started wanting to do that on his own. He actually likes to set the table. He loves setting the table, actually. Um, at the beginning, you know, he, he was really fascinated with the dishwasher. He thought it was an oven. He didn't know why we would be putting all these things in an oven. You know, he, he grabs the remote control or he, he'll hear the tumble dry on the, on the dryer and he's like, what's going on there? Why is it shaking? And he'll just ask question after question because he wants to learn what is this all about. In the know? beginning, he was a little shy, but um, I think after that, he, he, he was very comfortable with us. Um, he, he got used to the routine at home. I, I just think anybody would have a hard time not falling in love with that kid's personality. He's just, he's got the best attitude and he's had the hardest background um, coming into it and, and he's always has a smile on his face as everybody can see. I'm getting ready for my prayer. I have to make Hulu. The Hulu, like, you just like wash your face and like wash your arm, you wash like almost all of you. Yep, you whole body. What did you just do? I just I was just praying. Uh, it's fun taking him out places, uh, showing him new things. Corn maze. Yeah. Let's talk about the corn maze. I have a vendor. Okay, go ahead. See what's going to happen. There's the drawing at Mohammed. There's the drawing. Right here. Yep, that's the drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember carving the pumpkin? The eyes out, <laughs> nose out, and teeth out. It, you know, that, that's one of the things oh, that, yeah. you know, we kind of take for granted here, but uh, we had a good time. He, um, his pumpkin wound yeah. up uh, outside on the, on the porch. Wow, good. Nice pumpkin. Today was, the weather is good. It's supposed, it's supposed to snow today. Ready? Ready. One, what? two, three. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he had a surgery at Sparrow. Um, they did his ear, his head, and his eye, and his nose. And there he is. Hey, Muhammad. Were you you held up a Marine yeah. flag? Yeah. And, and what did you say and why? I said I love the Marines. And how come? I uh, probably because they're nice people. This is the flag, this is the Marines flag that I got from Wisconsin. But I love it. I love Marine. I love Marine. I love Marine. I think for the first, you know, few weeks you, you're you're there and you're kind of you know, trying to be more a professional role of like, oh, this is a, you know, somebody here needs care, we're a host family, and the interaction is, is more formal, and, you know, through time, and just his personality, you, you know, you really, you really get into that relationship with him where um, I feel like he's one of my nephews now, and when I go over to their house and play with them or take them out and do something fun, it's, it's just like he's, he's, another, he's another nephew. Cookie, they're Iraqi, they heard about me in the newspaper. And they wanted to help me, and they sell the cookie and and uh, cupcakes, and they want and they're coming today to give me the money. A lot of people love you, Muhammad. A lot of people care about you, and a lot of people want to meet you too. Thank but, you for being here. Of course, oh, and good luck with your surgeries. You're gonna do well. This is this is the money for you. Thank you. You're welcome.
when he wants to watch something on TV, he, he, he'll run for the remote and he's like, you know, I've got an hour. Nobody can change the channel. I, I've got to watch baseball. We've certainly never watched as much baseball as we had since, you know, since he's been here. This is the Iraqi uh, flagship. We're here to vote. We're in Dearborn here to vote. Come in. Uh, are you excited to come and vote today? Yeah. Show me your purple finger. So you voted. Say I voted. I voted. Why, why are you bringing dog and school? At some point he's going to be going back to his, his own family and I think that's going to be very difficult to deal with but you know for, I think for us to have that relationship with him will will go a long way in, in, in helping him feel um, you know less nervous and less lonely because he's a whole world away from his, his mother and his brothers and sisters so um, that's that's definitely something special that's come out of this. One of the truly wonderful things about being here is that sometimes legends come to town. And if you're a student, it can be an amazing experience to work with and learn from the maestro, composer John Corigliano. This is going to be a great teaching tool for, for my stories on the emotional class. Yeah. It's a personality thing, you know, some Composers are ill at ease in speaking to people, and that's why they compose, but actually, I like speaking to people. I thought I would tell you a little bit about the films I've done and some of the techniques involved in film composing. He's, uh, like, I think right now the most famous American composer. I don't want to lose you, you see. I just came to Michigan to study the great violinist Dmitry Berlinsky and I really like it here and uh, now I get to meet John Carliano who is my favorite composer since I was eight. <laughs> I love teaching. I love teaching. I love students and uh, talking to them and answering questions and they give me things to think about and I give them things to think about. It's, it's a nice exchange. I had a uh, uh, a clarinet when I was in high school and took two lessons from Stanley Drucker, the first clarinet of the New York Philharmonic, and then it was stolen from my high school gym locker, and that was the end of that, so I, <laughs> I didn't learn the clarinet. I have no words how they, do, how, how they do that. It's just so awesome for students, for everyone, for a community. It's an amazing opportunity. I mean, I think it's beneficial. But it depends if, you know, if they feel that this is beneficial, they should do more. I tell on Facebook, like, I write on status, uh, John Corleone is coming tomorrow, and everyone, oh my God, <laughs> you're so lucky to meet him. <laughs> what I might ask Marguerite to do is first, just play the red violin theme. Some friends in New York, they were like, oh, you're crazy. Why are you switching school to Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I want to study there. I like the violin professor there. And now they're like, oh, you get so many opportunities to go there and to play there and to play for Coriliano. And, and um, we are jealous, actually, when we want to go to Michigan to study in your university. You never know what questions you're going to get. I like that. I don't like reading from a script, and I don't like, um, you know, pre-prepared questions. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Even when you're a first-rate violinist, it is, takes you right to the edge. But that's the point of these caprices. They were, I wrote them to take the violinist right to the edge of playing because that's what's exciting. I just watched the movie Red Violin and it became my favorite movie and uh, uh, I was inspired by that to play the violin. Now I got the possibility to play for a composer and it's amazing. <laughs> I think they're very high music level here. Um, in fact, I'm getting great performances of two of my most difficult pieces. It's really difficult. <laughs> they have no problem with it. I'm very happy about that.
Well, it's wonderful to have a violinist uh, playing with such assuredness and playing such a difficult piece. That was the first time we met, too. Engineering students get to do some pretty cool stuff, and sometimes they get really, really dirty doing it. And sometimes they even let guys like me slop it up with them. Okay, it's raining, it's muddy. What are we doing here today? This is the Michigan State Baja SAE Proving Grounds. Um, we are the off-road racing team for Michigan State University. And uh, we're going to be taking these cars out. You're going to be taking these cars out? You're going to let me do this or not, do you think? We can let you drive. We can let you drive a little bit today. Yeah, we're going to drive around on the grounds, roll it over a little bit, get a little muddy, get a little dirty. You're going to roll it over. I'm not going <laughs> to roll it over. Right. How did this team get started? I mean, did you guys just decide to be fun to play in the dirt and the mud, or how did it come together? Oh, that's a little bit. That's a little bit of it. Um, the Society of Automotive, Automotive Engineers sponsors um, a bunch of different collegiate design series teams, um, Baja SAE being one of them. Um, so it, since the late 80s here at Michigan State, we've had a Baja SAE racing team. How is the team done? You guys compete, you're out there, you're running. Is it like a regular race circuit? Um, yeah, in the past 10 years, we've actually had seven top 10 finishes in international competitions, and that includes up to 150 teams from over 10 different countries all over the world. So um, in the past two years, we placed fourth place in the World Challenge, getting beat only by Brazil, Canada, and Tennessee Tech University. And then last year, we got a special innovation award for having the first successful four-wheel drive Baja SAE vehicle. Now, do you have to be in engineering to be part of this team, or is it open to anybody Absolutely on campus? Absolutely not. Anybody from any major can join the team. We do uh, everything from marketing to a sponsorship to business to driving to engineering to designing, all different aspects of engineering as well. So. And you tell me this is educational. It's not just about running around, that you're learning real That's practical <laughs> things that help you. It's a, it's a real university activity, right? Right. Key things that you don't learn in the classroom. Um, Right, when you're on the side of the track in the middle of an endurance race and you have 30 seconds to figure out how to fix your suspension to get back in the race, you know, a little bit of two by four, some rebar and some duct tape, that's the kind of engineering we're talking about here, you know? This is like duct tape engineering. <laughs> that's this... right. Okay, cool. All right, Ken, so this looks pretty, did you, you got a spot? Yeah, there's a little bit all over the place. So. That was that was nice. That was so. Was this like a typical day out here for you? Or? I mean, it, it doesn't always get this wet, but uh, yeah, this is what we do. This is our test course. We come out here and do driving. And I mean, this is good because at the races it could rain like this. So it's good to you know get testing in any type of weather, any type of conditions. And as long as it's not pavement, we can drive through it. This t team is a complete team. We design the car, so we learn how to do that initially. And then you build the car that you've just designed. And then obviously the ultimate goal is to race and win. So you have to be able to do all three of those things well to be you know, a good competitive team. Our shop is completely self-sustainable. We got every tool we need, um, which is real nice, with lathes and mills you know, to make. Everything you see on this car that looks made by us, it was made by us. Well, the idea is to come out here and drive it hard and try and break it because if something breaks, it means you didn't build it strong enough and you have to go back and redesign it. So we want it to break here on our course in controlled environments where we've got the tools and got the ability to check out what's wrong, go back and you know make it better. So when we're at the race doing our four-hour endurance race, it, uh, if so, we're not going to see that same failure. And, uh, and you guys, you said you're willing to let me get behind this? and Yeah, if, if you want to drive this, we'll strap you up in it and let you take it for a spin. Now, my, my director told me I can't go too fast because we're going to have cameras and stuff and I have to roll it. So I would normally just go crazy yeah. and, and just be flying around. I, here. I but completely if, understand. If you don't see that, you know why. I'm not, I'm not wimping out. I, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, and I, I, I just wish I could be like you. Okay, so. You ready uh, to drive? I'm ready to drive. I don't know if I'm ready to drive. At least I'll look good, right? Right. Now, this is, uh, this is called, just because it goes with my eyes? Yeah. Now it's called Nomex. In case you catch on fire, you'll still live. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in case I catch on fire, not right. when I catch on fire. It's, it's okay. never happened before, so. Okay. Not with a Michigan State car, anyway. Never say it's never happened before when there's a camera crew here. <laughs> Is this made for tall guys? All right, you ready to go? I'm ready. 
How'd it go? That was awesome. I got a little muddy. This um, is good. Yeah, you look a little different. Do I? You might need a shower. Okay. Well, that's good. So, give me out. So, like yeah. I said, it's nice and simple. Oh, that one? Pull, that. pull the latch pull up. The there, yep. there you go. All right. <laughs> Man. And there you are. And that's Baja. Wow. Awesome. I'm Jim Peck and that's it for this time, but I'll see you next time on MSU Today or anytime on Facebook if, uh, if we can be friends. Preceding program was produced by Michigan State University in association with the Big Ten Network.